in this new post-crash, do you think that globalization could go to a degree into reverse or be deflected from its linear course of development? Because that would have a big impact on a business like yours. I, I wouldn't say that yeah. that would have primarily a big impact on a business like ours. Um, we are a global business, but we are global, local or global regional. Um, we have our employment spread across the three regions. We have our production spread across the three regions. And, and although we may do some more electronics in Asia that we ship to the US and to Europe, uh, in the US and Europe, we make high-end uh, uh, medical uh, equipment. Uh, our lighting is fairly regional, and that will stay. You get a tendency towards buying national. Well, if there is uh, made in the USA, we have a hell of a lot made in the USA. Where I see a tendency to go back uh, in reverse in terms of globalization, it's in the financial sector. Because uh, certainly as we, as we have experienced in Europe, um, Globalization has only gone to some extent, in particularly in investment banking, in, the, in, the, in big finance. Uh, the majority of banking is regional or national. And um, in Europe, we've seen that, that even in financial terms, there is no Europe. There are only national uh, constituencies because we have national supervisors and national governments that had to bail out banks where they were headquartered. Yeah? We have national, international banks. And with, um, I guess, uh, more than half of the banks in the UK owned more or less by the state, in the Netherlands owned by the state, uh, big uh, government infusions uh, in other countries as well, there is a tendency um, in parliaments to say these banks should support the local economy, they should support the local companies. Um, that's where I see uh, things going in reverse. Um, global trade is slowing down. Uh, indeed, uh, there is a huge overcapacity at the moment in shipping. Um, and maybe, maybe, uh, rightfully so. Uh, because we, we also have to use this crisis to fundamentally rethink a number of things that we have been doing. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. But this point about the, the, the last 15 or to 20 years have, have seen the just widespread support for the free movement of goods, labor, capital, and in the last two years, you've seen some of the negative aspects of globalization. Um, and my question is, David, do you think that politicians will seize on this, you know, start to pick on actors that are peripheral actually to the problem, but say, you know, the problem is these companies that benefit, I mean, look at the European directive uh, proposed legislation on private equity funds, hedge funds, they're part of the problem. Do, do, is this going to cause serious problems to your business? Globalization was a problem early on in terms of some people's perspective because it really meant, in, uh, it was a word that many people interpreted to mean Americanization. People saw globalization being synonymous with Americanization or Americanizing mm. of the global economy, and many people outside the United States did not like that. When the economy went down, around the world, people began to say around the world, well, see, we told you so. The Americans have uh, brought Anglo-Saxon capitalism or other Anglo-Saxon um, traits to our economy, and they've ruined our economy. And as a result, people now have the ability to say we should not um, allow globalization to move forward. We should do the kinds of things that are being talked about in the EU, which is to constrain private equity or hedge funds or things like that, both of which are seen as, quote, Anglo-Saxon capitalism. Globalization is here to stay. Uh, it's, it, because of technology, and everybody knows so much about what's going on around the rest of the world, because of the, the internet and other things, it's unlikely that we're going to have any real diminution in globalization over, over the next 20, 30, 40 years. But living through this period of time, the next two or three years, will be difficult for globalization because politicians have the ability now to say, well, we ought to correct these problems, and it calls, they're caused by globalization. Politicians in Europe can blame the Americans. Politicians in Asia can blame the Americans. And politicians in America can blame people outside. And we will see a lot of um, protectionism all over the world arising because of this. I think that I worry most about the United States. We like to talk about uh, free trade, but we are actually among the most protectionist countries in the world. Will Rogers once famously said, the country's never quite safe when Congress is in session. And I think uh, he, he had a good point. 
Um, I, I worry about what our Congress will do in this situation now because there's an opportunity to blame foreigners for our economic problems, just as foreigners are now blaming us for their economic problems. So I think globalization will have a bad odor about it for the next year or so, but it's inevitable that it will continue going forward, and I think it's actually good for the global economy, but persuading people of that is not easy. Shep? I think uh, the globalization genie will not go back in the bottle. I think it has served uh, a great many people around the world. If you look at the impact of globalization over the last 15 or 20 years, 2 billion people around the world have been brought from subsistence into markets. Uh, so I think in the long run, as David said, it will serve us very well going forward because of comparative advantage that you get from doing the right things in the right places for the right cost. What we've done in the United States and around the world, however, is not done the right work to have those impacted negatively by globalization addressed through training, through diversification in other ways. And that is something that the politicians will obviously glom onto. Uh, as to Will Rogers and the Congress, I agree, and that's especially the case when we give the Congress the hammer to beat us up around the head with, and that's what we have done in certain of our financial dealings, in certain of the excesses that we've had around the world. Bottom line, though, globalization works for most people. There needs to be some adjustments, adjustments in it. I agree with Gerhard that we need to be more fundamental about pure value in things. We need to be more modest in what our expectations are. But in the long run, it is the best model going forward. Do you think there's a free trade majority in Congress no. anymore? No, and I think for the reasons David said, where it affects individual constituencies within a Congress, within a business, within a district, there's always going to be a backlash against it. That's happening in the United States. It's happening in Europe. It's happening in selected places, for instance, uh, in Asia. Uh, but I think if you look at the rhetoric during the most recent uh, presidential campaign, where people were very worried about the Obama administration's response, that in the end, the value of globalization and free trade comes through. And uh, armed with the right facts, the Congress will do the right thing. Although we're in for a bumpy road, as David said, for the next couple of years.